Hi, this is Lecture 5 in Voice Leading Basics, and today we're going to start actually connecting up chords. Remember that our goal is to make coherent parts, soprano, alto, tenor, bass, that also uh, are taking the tones of the chords in question. What I've done is I've put up already our staves, and I've put up the key signature for G major, and I'm going to, uh, as the Roman numerals indicate, write a 5-1 progression, like an authentic cadence. So imagine that we already figured out that D is the fifth scale degree in G major, and G is the first scale degree, so there is my bass. I'm writing a root position bass, which means that the bass notes will be the roots of the chord. So when we have our five chord, D will be in the bass. When we have our one chord, G will be in the bass. I'm now going to put down a sort of cheat staff that shows us the notes of this chord. We see that our five chord is D, F sharp, A. And our one chord is G, B, D, which means that the uh, two chords are a fifth apart. So this is our fourth fifth relationship. And they share the D. So now I'm going to voice the chord by putting some notes into each of the other voices. So I'm going to choose A for the soprano note in this chord. And I can now put the other voices in below that. And it's fairly, it's a relatively low soprano note, so I'm going to put it in close voicing which means the altos will have the next note down, F sharp. And the tenors will have the next note down, which is D. But we'll write it in the bass clef, so it's the D above middle C here. The first way that we're going to write this progression is to keep the common tone. This is a way of making sure that the progression is as smooth as possible and that everyone moves a small amount or not at all to get from one chord to the next so that their lines are um, coherent. So since the tenors have the D, we're going to keep it there. So sorry tenors, you don't get to move. You keep the same note. And then the other voices will move nearby to notes of the chord. So now we have, it's a G, B, D chord. We have our G, we have our D. And then you look at where the soprano and the alto are. They're on F sharp and A. And you can see that they can move nicely to G and B just by going up a step. This is what is called the common tone connection. I can make the same connection, but if sometimes the melody line doesn't allow that, this uh, common tone connection. So what if instead I wanted the melody line to come down from A to G? I wanted maybe a good ending to a piece with the melody on the tonic. Now I have a problem, because if I left the tenors on D and I have the sopranos on G, there's nowhere for the altos to go. They could go into a unison with the sopranos or with the tenors, but then there would be no B. The chord would have no third. And we need a third 
in each of our chords because it, without that we don't know if it's major or minor. So instead, when that happens, we can't keep the common tone, so the rule is just move everybody in the same direction to the nearest note of the chord. So since the melody is coming down, we'll move everybody else down as well. And so this is what's called the non-common tone connection. Either way, you'll notice that the idea is that nobody moves all that far. Everybody moves a short distance, and sometimes uh, some voices don't move at all. Those are two ways to connect chords that are a fourth or a fifth apart, such as five and one, one and four, two and five, etc. Okay, this has taken long enough, so we'll have another lecture on what to do when the chords are a second or a third apart. See you in class.